Welcome back to Sidewalks Entertainment. She was a part of Hollywood's Golden Age. In 2009, our show had the honor to interview a multi-talented star of stage and screen. Please join us as we take a look back as we remember the legendary actress, Missy Gaynor. Your film fans know you for uh, such work in uh, The Joker's Wild, um, Anything Goes, and of course, South Pacific, which we'll talk about in just a second. But we want to get to know you a little bit better, Mitzi, if you don't mind. I'd like it. What um, do you have in mind, yeah. Raphael? <laughs> now, when you first entered the business, uh, the world was a different place, especially for women. Did you always know you wanted to become an actress? Well, I started out as a dancer with the Civic Light Opera, so I've been in, in the theater since I was 13. <laughs> I've been earning my living since I was 13 years old. And right. um, um, I sang and I danced. I was in the ballet and... and uh, um, so when I was uh, uh, when I did a screen test at 20th Century Fox, I was already 17 years old. So I was, what shall we say, an actress. And it's so funny. <laughs> I was born in Chicago, and when I was three, we moved to Detroit, or as I like to say, Detroit. And uh, I found that I grew. Uh, I was there until I was 11. And 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 um, when I when I lived in Detroit, I would say things like a sofa. But then I became an actress, and I said couch and uh <laughs> i had uh, with the civic light operas i started out and i had um as i said i was 13 and i looked 16 and uh, <laughs> for me to get a job i had to write down i was 16 i was still paying for those three years believe me um and uh, <laughs> i was tested at fox and i wanted a contract to them and so um i've just been in the business all my life i see um um i see a lot of changes of course uh I miss the studio system desperately because, um, I mean, for me anyway, um, it was a place, it was home. You had a family, mm -hmm. you had people that took care of you and, and made you and, and built you into things that, um, uh, that you, maybe you, you didn't even dream that you were going to be. I mean, that I did South Pacific after uh, leaving Fox. I left Fox in uh, 1954 um, mm -hmm. to go on and do other projects. And then coming back to do South Pacific, I went, I was in my friend's arms again. I mean, the same body makeup girl, the same hairdresser, the same makeup man. It was wonderful. It was, seems very have, familiar. Well, yeah, and and you don't and you know Alfred Newman was the uh, was the or orchestra conductor. You don't have that anymore. You just you just don't have that anymore, and um, that's that's the big difference. People are. They're doing single projects now. There are no studio systems, and I say I miss it. And the best studio of all was 20th Century Fox. Ta -da! Uh, hands hands down, right? Because uh, the system was so together, because the people were so nice. Why is that? I think it's well. Of course, it you know it, it was the chief. I mean, it was Mr. Zanuck. Daryl Zanuck was the head of the studio when I was there, and uh, he really cared about everybody uh, that that were uh, all the people that worked for him, and he was a good boss, and he and he had beautiful taste. Well, obviously, he had you as one of uh, the people in his stable of, of talented uh, artists. So, of course, he had some sort of brains in his head, right? Yes. Uh, now, in your career, you've starred opposite the likes of uh, Bing Crosby, Gene Kelly, uh, Frank Sinatra, just to name a few. Uh, is there a current working actor or actress that you'd like to work with? Well, I like Alec, Alec Baldwin so much. I think mm. he's, you know, he's, I just think he's delicious. I know him, and, and I've seen him work on the hoof. I've seen him on stage. I've seen him MC programs. He's a wonderful sense of humor. He's nuts and I adore nuts. So uh, <laughs> I love it. I mean, he's, uh, he's so cool and he's so good and he's pretty honest for an Irishman. I was married to an Irishman, so I know about Irishmen. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, he's, uh, he's on a little show called 30 Rock. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, a little you know show. Yeah, yeah, right. A little show. It's just it's a little amazing. hole in the wall show. I, I can see. Cute. Mitzi, Mitzi, what about a guest appearance on 30 Rock? Well, I don't know. I mean, um, I, I've been asked to do a lot of things. Uh, I, I don't know. It's been such a long time since I've done that. Um, I, you see, I, I did my own television specials and uh, I did movies and now I do my own program and so on. And. Uh, and it's called the Mitzi Gaynor Show. Isn't that a clever title? Irving Berlin said he wanted me to do, he said, Mitzi, I want you to do Annie, get your gun. I want you to take a, a, do a company of Annie. I said, Mr. Berlin, I can't, because I'd known him when I first started in show business, in, in, the, in the theater. And he said, <laughs> why? I said, because I'm doing a show. And he said, what? And I said, the Mitzi Gaynor Show. And he said, clever title. So I've always said it's a clever title. It is a clever title. I like it. It speaks to the project. Now, OK, speaking of projects, can you believe it? 50-year anniversary Amazing. of Amazing. South Pacific. Is this bizarre or what? 
I mean, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? And it still works. It still the, you know what? works. Mitzi, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you, do you think a movie like South Pacific, if, if open now, would do as well as it did back then and, and would do as well as it's done over the years? I think it would do better. Really? Oh, yeah. Why I think is it that? Would do better. Well, first of all, because uh, it's, it's, it's still so relevant and mm -hmm. um, people are more sophisticated now than they were then. And mm -hmm. um, they can see all of the ramifications of things that have happened in these 50 years. And it's still happening today. I mean, we're at war. Um, we're trying to get out of it. We're, you know, there's still so much conflict going on. And, and uh, we're, it's such an American film, you know. It, mm -hmm. it, it's, mm -hmm. it's such an uplifting film. It's, it's about hope. And, it, and it's about overcoming obstacles. And nobody does it as well as the American public. Well, and, and of course, love is a universal theme. And love will never die. And, and of course, it's a love story as well. Yes, two love stories, two exquisite love stories, really, when you think of it. And, but, and, and look at the conflict between both of those, all four of those people. I mean, Cable right. and Liot and, and, and uh, Emil and, and Nellie. I mean, the conflicts and the war and the island and, and the fear. And um, it's, um, it's an exciting film. I mean, uh, it's, and the music. <gasps> the music is Rogers divine. and Hammerstein. Come on. Yeah. Can't do any better than that, can you? You can't do any. No, you can't. Absolutely and not. And also, the wonderful thing about it is so many people are grown up now um, s s that were in school and were singing I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair or singing Honey Bun and, and they've grown up with it and a lot of young people now are going to say oh I didn't know that that, that song was from that show so uh, right. they're going to be finding out new things about it have you seen it in Blu-ray? Uh, I have not seen it in Blu-ray I have like one or two Blu-ray discs that I don't even know how to use Oh, uh, <laughs> because the Blu-ray machine who knows it tells me all these different things uh, but, but I'm going to figure it out you have to because it's it's going to amaze you. You're going to be just you're going to be thrilled. You really are. And have an evening. I mean, really, have an enchanted evening with it. Well, if you're a fan of South Pacific, and, and who wouldn't be, the DVD extras on this DVD are far bigger and better than I've ever seen in any other kind of a DVD special. You have a roadshow version of the film. Yes, yes. You have a, full, a feature length documentary. Yes. There's your screen test, Mitzi Gaynor's screen test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it? What are, what are we going to see? I want to. Are we going to see you just raw? Or what's going to happen? Oh God! It's so good. It's. Um, <laughs> they spent two hundred thousand dollars. Listen to this. I mean, yeah. really, two hundred thousand dollars fifty years ago was like twenty million dollars. I, I right. It was. <laughs> Uh, and, and Josh wanted it, and he wanted to test out the Todd AO, and he wanted it, and he wanted me, and he wanted to show, you know, everybody that was concerned with it that I could do this, because up to that time, all of my films, it had feathers and beads, and I don't care, and golden girls, and, and lay girls, and all of that, and mm. he would just peel all of these artificialities off of me, get rid of the feathers, get rid of the things, get rid of the, the, the phony, I used, oh, I used to wear, um, um, well, I was, Arlene Dahl had one, so why can't I have one? And uh, <laughs> I, he just started to peel all of this away, and uh, that's why he wanted me to test. And I was doing, I was doing The Joker is Wild with Frank Sinatra when I tested, and so I, I couldn't cut my hair out, because my, my hair had a wa match, you know. And, right, right, uh, of course. And, uh, and, and, and it worked, and I don't remember doing it. Isn't that terrible? I must really, but so now, but now you can watch it back, and it's wonderful memories. I'm I, sure. I look at it and I say, "Well, look at you! <laughs> look, well, look at you! Look what you little kid, what you were doing!" Look, if you're a fan of this movie, and I hate to sound like I'm on public television here, but if you're, you know what I mean, and doing a pitch, but honestly, when I was checking this thing out, I was like, "You have got to be kidding me!" Even if you're a, a moderate fan, yeah. I don't know who's a moderate fan of South Pacific, but even a, a, a moderate fan, you got to love. The extras that you're going to get. The extras are amazing. Well. Aren't they amazing? They, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen anything so chock full of goodies as, no, as me this. Neither. I mean, it's it's a real package of joy. Oh, that was a fun interview with Mitzi. She was truly one of the last in Hollywood's golden age of classical Hollywood cinema. She passed away on October 17, 2024, at the young age of 93. Thank you to our den host, Raphael Siegel, for doing the interview with the one and only Mitzi Gaynor. Rest in peace, Mitzi. You will be missed. For more full-length celebrity interviews, 
visit us at SidewalksTV.com, our YouTube channel, and don't forget to follow us on social media.